uh, Karen and Amber. They're going to lead us in the flag salute and read the land acknowledgement. Oh, hello. Yeah, well, just right there would be great. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we sit down and you read the land acknowledgement. Acknowledges that we gather on the unceded ancestral homelands of the Ramatush. Among the people as guests, we humbly extend our gratitude to the Ramatush, among the elders and community. We recognize that we benefit from living and working on their traditional homeland and we affirm their sovereign rights as first peoples. As original stewards of this land, the Ramatush only understand the interconnectedness of all things and the importance of maintaining harmony with nature. Likewise, the Pacifica School District commits to teaching our school community how to be responsible stewards of this land. <laughs> So I don't know where is the best place for you to stand so that people can see you, but if you want to come down here, maybe, then the people in front can see you, and then the sayers can see you. Come on over here. Come on. Were you going to tell us a little bit yeah. about your school? Yeah. Good reading. I don't know. Right there. I like homeschooling because it is very fun and it makes me happy, gives me freedom and flexibility to do things I'm interested in. I can spend more time with my family. I can also homeschool in my pajamas or in bed. <laughs> <laughs> For example, if I'm good at that subject, I can learn it faster, and but I don't understand that subject, I can spend more time on it. I can live where I want. If I, if I am camping or I'm going on a trip, I can bring some work to do on the trip. The homeschool program and and she gives me lots of real books and she gives me different homework. My very own homework is machine science. On morning days, we sometimes play games or teach a resource. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Uh, their teacher, Michelle Rizzo, a long time Ortega teacher who moved over to uh, the homeschool program uh, during the pandemic when we needed some additional people. And now we have both a, a primary teacher and an upper grades teacher to cover the KE. And we are so grateful for her work. So thank you. Yes, thank you. So this is the part where I politely say, we're really glad that you're here and it's important to be in a board meeting, but we know that you have homework to do and we'll have no problem if you slip out the door. So thank you very much for coming. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Barbara, um, would you please take the roll call? Yes, Here. 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 
All right. The district records the audio portion of the meetings. All recordings are kept in the superintendent's office for 30 days and are available during the time that time period for inspection by members of the public on district equipment without charge. In-person speakers wishing to address the board on agenda or non-agenda items, please complete a request card with your name, address, and item number and submit it to the board president or the superintendent. You'll be called to the address the board and may speak for up to three minutes. Virtual speakers wishing to address the board on agenda or non-agenda items, please submit your first and last name and agenda item you wish to speak on uh, in the Q&A area of the webinar. Please do not submit comments or questions in the Q&A area. You'll be called to address the board. Your microphone will be unmuted and you may speak for up to three minutes. After you've spoken, your microphone will be muted. All right, so report out on closed session topics. Uh, the board met in closed session to discuss the closed session item, comprehensive school safety plan and security of school facilities, the tactical portion. Uh, the board took a vote and voted 5-0 um, to uh, pass that, uh, that item. All right, uh, on to action item, approval of the minutes. Um, are there any questions regarding these minutes? Uh, the minutes from January 11th, 2023, special meeting of the board. All right, no questions. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the minutes of January 11th, 2023? I will make a motion to approve the minutes of January 11th, 2023. All right, do I have a second? I'll second. All right, Barbara, will you please take the second? Uh, I'll second. All those in favor, please raise your hand. Motion passes by zero. All right, approval of the minutes of January 18th. Um, are there any questions regarding these minutes from January 18th, 2023? All right, do we have a motion to approve the minutes? I'll motion to approve the minutes of January 18th. I'll second. All right, Barbara, take a vote. Yes. Motion passes 5 0. All right. Um, next is approval agenda. Um, all items on the consent agenda will be approved with one motion, which is not debatable and which requires a unanimous vote for passage. If any member of the board, the superintendent, or the public so request, any item shall be removed from this section and placed in the regular order of business following approval of the consent agenda. Are there any questions regarding the agenda or consent agenda? All right, seeing none. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the agenda and consent agenda? A motion to approve the agenda and consent agenda. Okay. Uh, all right, Barbara, will you please take the vote? One big Motion passes by zero. Thank you. All right. Um, agenda. Four. Let's see. What do I have here? Communications. Um, speakers wishing to address the board on agenda items or non-agenda items, please submit your first and last name and agenda item you wish to speak on in the Q&A area of the web. Please do not submit comments or questions in the Q&A area. You'll be called to address the board. Your microphone will be unmuted and you may speak for up to three minutes. After you've spoken, your micro microphone will be muted. All right, um, communications. Is someone here from LSEA? I'm not on Zoom, so. Oh. Okay. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Hold on. Are we there? Okay. <laughs> now I need to find my speech. I put it on the computer. All right. Or, I mean, I speak off the cuff all the time, right? <laughs> uh, LSEA met at the bargaining table with the district today. Many topics from both Sunshine proposals were discussed, including site-based decision-making, teacher in charge, hours, and class size. Sharing of information and brainstorming was the theme of the day. Work is still needed on all topics. At our union meeting last week, members were anxious about what they had been hearing about class sizes, potential collapsing classes, awkward grade level combos, and reassignments. We promptly reached out to Carla to coordinate a meeting to share concerns of our membership. We welcome John as Director of Student Services and Heather as Superintendent to have a working conversation to share these concerns and seek clarifications. We met today with Carla and John, and we are grateful for
for their time and communication and commitment to continue to problem solve and seek solutions. Recently, LSEA reached out to the district to create a partnership with us to encourage members to attend CTA sponsored workshops. The workshops focus on supporting our members and their mental health. As I'm sure you are well aware, teaching isn't the easiest job right now and definitely takes a toll on our mental health. LSEA and PSD partner together to compensate members in order to encourage them to attend these meetings. Yeah. I'm happy to report 24 of our members attended today. Thank you, PSD, for partnering with us. Our next negotiations, negotiation session is March 8th. We look forward to continued work together. Thank you. Thanks, Megan. All right, thank you. All right, our next speaker from CSCA. Hello, my name is Nicole Sayers and I'm the president of CSCA. Tonight, I would like to welcome Rachel Lau, our new sustainability coordinator at Cabrillo School. It's a grant funded program and we're happy to have her. I know her, so it's good. Uh, CSCA is looking forward to setting up negotiation dates with the district as we sunshine Article 15, safety, as we want to be sure that all of our members feel safe and are provided all the safety material, materials and equipment needed to do their jobs. Article 27, vacancies, as we had only one classified hire this month for a new position, but no classified hires for the many positions being held by contracted employees. And as always, we look forward to negotiating Article 10, compensation as we are very pleased at that CSEA was able to negotiate with the district a 7% wage increase last year. And we hope that the district will continue to work with us as we move forward in providing our members with wages that enhance their lives and continue to close the gap between our district and neighboring districts higher wages. Thank you for your time. We have a, a public comment on Tennessee. Right, thanks. So I'll elevate Nicole, Nicole, can you hear us? Did we also want to do video on Nicole? She's muted. You, She's muted? You have to mute yourself. Maybe we should ask her one more time. She minutes. Yeah. Nicole, can you hear us? She's there. She no, no. Tin C. She wanted to comment. On it was she wanted to to comment on Tin C. Okay, so Tin C's yes. right now. Relation to your right one. Nicole, can you hear us? I, I, she can hear me. We can't hear you. Are you muted? She says I can hear. How about you turn up the TV? We could hear Megan though. That's a thing. Um. Okay, try again. Hmm. All right. She's muted, but I don't see any signal in her mic. Yeah, we don't see any signal in your mic. Um, what we can do is we can go on to the other item and then we can come back to this item, but nobody should leave. <laughs> so uh, let's go on to the next thing and then we'll okay. go back when we get Nicole in if you guys have more questions. Okay, perfect. Okay. All right, so we will jump ahead to correspondence. Are there any correspondence? I do not have any correspondence. All right, and then uh, communications from the board and superintendent. Yes. So I don't have any communications because I've been extremely busy. Um, my daughter is attending San Mateo High School. 
She is in their production of Something Rotten. So I just want to announce the three more shows. Okay. <laughs> so tomorrow, um, and Friday and Saturday, Saturday's a matinee, tomorrow evening and Friday evening, I think it's at seven, is really good. The kids are exceptional. Um, it's like a Broadway level production. So if you can attend, please go ahead this weekend. You have your plans. It's before Super Bowl, you won't miss it. It's really worth it, and it's a very funny play. So it's a very funny play. So if you can go, please go. What's the time today? Um, this is the last meeting. Um, I went to the, the CPAC meeting that was uh, regarding the LCAT. And uh, Workforce Housing had meetings weekly. Uh, there was a band director meeting, and then uh, Mr. Unbehagen started his um, music concerts uh, at the grade schools, the third through fifth grade, and it's singing. I went to Sunset Ridge yesterday, and it was really adorable. They put a lot of energy into that. It's a time warp, so it's music from all the parents and grandparents at the time. Um, then I went to the uh, Sabatio Office of Ed, had the governor's budget review, um, learned quite a bit there. And then I did attend something rotten, and I actually brought this to show if you beat me to it. So uh, do go see it if you can, because I went this week, and it was really a group really, of kids did a really great job. <laughs> um, I uh, participated in the Bond Oversight Committee, and other than that, no correspondence. Uh, I don't have any correspondence. Uh, I toured IBL. I wanted to see what the security was like when you walk in, and it's very impressive. And pretty soon they'll be able to buzz people through the front door. Um, and then I just looked at the shades and making sure there's window coverings and whatnot. Um, I went to the joint articulation meeting. And so something is happening for me here. I used to go to the joint articulation meetings, and I don't want to offend anybody, but the water department area, I didn't quite understand all the time. But now they have a really exceptional project going on that I'm really curious about, but they're collecting the droplets from the fog at different areas. And uh, one of the representatives said that they haven't they haven't seen that much collected, except for what's up at um, Fairmont. Like, so I just think it'd be a really good field trip. I don't know if the kids can do that or whatever, but it's just, it's really interesting. Uh, so we have um, the city there as well, and they're in the process of hiring a new police chief. Uh, Jefferson High School District is doing very well with their workforce housing. They only had five vacancies and they started the year with uh, no certificated staff needed because they already had them hired. Five vacancies in the apartment buildings. Yeah, apartments, yes. Um, and then I think that's it. And then I went to the parcel tax oversight committee meeting, but we didn't have a quorum. So we're going to reschedule that one on March 1st. And do it on there. All right. And um, I also uh, attended the joint articulation meeting, which is just a, it's just a great uh, meeting, just kind of touch base with everybody in the in Pacifica. Um, also, Measure, Measure O Advisory Committee, uh, which we'll get a report on tonight. And also, we've been having weekly meetings with Dr. Olson. Um, so that's what I've been up to. I have been mostly working on principal observation uh, at both staff meetings, and uh, we do classroom walkthroughs. And uh, so it's kind of an interesting process because here's my interaction with the principal but we're observing teaching and talking about the teaching that's happening at their school. So I was at Valamar this week, um, and I look forward to the February break to uh, be able to write some of those up and debrief them. So. All right, great. Um, before we go on, I was just want to see if Nicole or Pega was able to get the mic working. Yeah. She's not in the. She's not back on. I don't see the phone. Let me just see. Attendees. No, I don't see anybody's phone. 
Okay, at some point when we get you in that participant list, we will stop what we're doing and okay. elevate. All right, sorry, Nicole, we're, we'll we'll hear you when we have a chance, so. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and move on to our next item, district goals. The district values the goals provided in our local control accountability plan and strategic plan. All of our district board agenda items are tied to these goals. One or more, more goals are listed in the description of each board agenda item. The details from each of those district goals can be accessed on our district website at www.pacificasd.org. All right, so next, our first information item is the Bond Oversight Committee Annual Report. And um, I believe Mr. Uh, Jesse Levin's here. Perhaps. Or, oh, Josie first. Oh, one speaker. Oh, okay. okay. Sue Beckner. I don't know if you would like to hear from her prior to the presentation or. Um, oh, maybe we'll hear the presentation and then. Okay. Yeah. All right. And we want to thank uh, Mr. Jesse Levin for coming and presenting tonight. And we're going to bring it up on the screen. Right. We're going to bring that one up. I'm just going to go through. Okay. Shall I start? Yes. Thank okay. You. Okay. Um, and thanks so much for having me. Um, I'm, I'm going to report out. Um, it's, it's, it's right on the screen. You, you can't read that? We can't read it? I'll wait. Okay, Dr. Levin, take it away. Okay. Um, so thanks so much. Um, this report uh, of the, the School District uh, Independent Citizens Oversight Committee um, is based on the progress update that was provided to us last um, last Wednesday, February 1st, by CC Meng, the project manager. Um, and she presented the bond projects with bi the bid costs and budgets and pictures. And I'm just going to give you a quick summary of um, of, of all of the excellent progress that uh, the district has made, um, spending our, uh, our our bond dollars well. Um, and I'm just going to go down the list uh, pretty quickly here. Uh, there's been carpet replacements done at three sites, uh, outdoor improvements at four sites, roof replacement at three sites. Uh, there have been new playground and miscellaneous outdoor improvements. Um, there's also been a campus-wide lock set replacement with new up-to-date locks that are um, engineered much better for, for rekeying. Um, and then finally, there, there, there have been school facilities improvements, just general, um, at, at virtually all of the sites. Um, the, the, the spending amounts that were provided to us were quite transparent. So if you're interested, I suggest you, you can read through the report. There are a couple of charts that we provided for you. Um, in summary, though, the um, about 44% of the bond money has been spent or is committed to, to projects that are in progress, while there are about 56% of the funds remain. Um, and there, there, I'm not going to go into the detail, but there's a, a second pie chart there that really breaks it out into what's been spent and what hasn't yet been spent. Um, for three different areas. One is construction that is not technology related. The other is for soft costs. Those are costs that are devoted to project design um, or the administration of uh, and management of the bond spending. And then finally, the, the, the third big bucket is technology. Um, so I invite you to look at the, the, the pie chart there and it, it gives a real, a real detailed breakout. So, um, just in conclusion, our, our review of the expenditure reports provided by the district really confirms that the bond proceeds have been spent in accordance with the purposes set forth in the Measure O, which are listed in this in, in, in the report, in the agenda item report. Um, furthermore, we thank the district representatives for serving as responsible stewards of the Measure O funding and for their tireless effort in ensuring these public dollars are spent wisely in order to provide the best possible educational experience for our students. That's all I got for you. 
This is for information, right? This is not a action item. It's just a speaker. Okay. All right. Thank you, Dr. Um, You're elevating Subek, Mark? I think I wish to allow it to Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so we're going to backtrack for speakers. Real quick, try this. So we have elevated her. Okay, uh, there she is. Hi, Sue Beckmeyer. Hello, right. am I elevated? You are yes. elevated, nice yes. and loud. Okay. On. So thanks so much for giving me a minute. Um, I did want to ask a couple of questions, specifically, you know, my focus, of course, being the libraries. Um, there, one thing I want to let you know is there was some con some surprise, frankly, um, with two of our schools that didn't realize their libraries were going to be recarpeted this summer. I've known Cabrillo was going to be done for a long time, but we're we're asking for a, a meeting. Basically, we would like to have a meeting. We met with Christy today. She's our you know, library supervisor and all of that. It was very convenient timing, but there's. We just have a lot of concerns and questions about timing, um, about the amount of work that LMTs are going to be required to do to prep for it, um, and what the general timelines are. Uh, seems like I've gotten a little bit of conflicting information about the material that's going to be used. Um, I've seen samples of it, and we have a little bit of concerns about that. So I'm not really sure the best way to proceed, but I know how these things work. They move fast. And being we're already in February, um, really want to just ask for some time to get these questions answered and resolved. Um, so that's pretty much that. And then just in terms of the report that was just given, um, it looks like if I read the, the document, Correctly, there's twenty five thousand twenty five million dollars ish left to be allocated. I'm not sure if I read that right, but another concern that I'm just going to raise is we had a meeting um, in October, I think it was a, a Cabrillo School staff meeting to talk about bond projects, and we haven't really heard of feedback on what is the status of the new building. Is it happening? Is it not? We knew that the con the cost, construction costs, materials costs, and everything has gone up astronomically. But it leaves us wondering where are we with that? And um, in terms of going back to carpet, it seems like some areas got are getting recarpeted and some are not. It's not clear to us if the office is scheduled to get recarpeted. The school office is the office going to be moved? There was that possibility. And then we have some classrooms that were not converted to the rubber floors. Um, and but they also haven't been scheduled for recarpeting that we know of. So it's just some questions like that and, and not really clear on where to go to get them answered. So I just thought I'd raise it now since it was on the agenda. Um, and I, as I said, I know these things can move really, really quickly. And I didn't want to lose the opportunity to raise those those issues. That's it. Thanks. Great. Thank Thanks. you. Did Nicole make it back? Oh, how about Nicole Ortega? Yeah, she showed up. She showed up. I actually wonder if we should finish this just one thing, but okay. but let's get Nicole Ortega since we're struggling with that one. She's she's in. Yeah. Yeah. We we got time. I, I had the time for an yeah, issue, we'll, but I think I'm there. I don't, we were faulty. So all through the three things. So I think <laughs> I got it. Did you do it now? Yep. Okay. Hello. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Nicole. Hi. I'm sorry about earlier. I was trying to log in from a Chromebook, a district Chromebook, but it wouldn't let my audio work. <laughs> so okay. thank you for for hearing me. Um, good evening, trustees, superintendent, cabinet, and those in attendance in person. I am proud to make this announcement on behalf of our classified school employees, Chapter 128. Um, the Above and Beyond Project is something that we started doing last year. 
And our, our goal of this pro project is to just recognize those employees that go above and beyond. And I am very proud to announce that our recipients for February 2023 are Nicole Sayers and Frank T. Nicole Sayers is our lead behaviorist and our chapter president. She consistently goes above and beyond for our students, for our chapter, and for all classified employees. Honorable mention goes to her husband, Patrick Sayers, who supports our chapter and members alongside his wife. Frank T. is one of our senior maintenance workers and our chapter's first vice president. Frank's dedication to our district, our staff and students, and our chapter brothers and sisters always goes and be above and beyond without fail. We are very fortunate to have such strong and dedicated people leading our union and watching out for all of us. We are very grateful for the leadership, care, kindness, and support that they show to us every day. We appreciate you both more than words can express. Thank you. Thanks, Nicole. Thank you. Thank you. That great. Wait, you, you have another item on the agenda. You're, you're the next in terms of the sun shining, right? There you go. <laughs> So, uh, this is not an action item, right? The, uh, no, 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 just for your information. And uh, so, we'd like to thank Dr. Levin for the. Uh, he actually offered to write the report, and so nice for you to write the report and to present. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank You're you very much. Thank you. Yeah. All right, this is the most bizarre board meeting that we've had because we also made a mistake in not reporting out on the special closed session, which was we've adjourned the special closed session. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the board met in closed session for a special session and no decisions were made during that time. So. It's just out of true transparency it's, uh, because I've received more than a few. Is there that was made. Uh, so first of all, uh, one mistake was we uh, said that it was going to start at 530. It really started at six. We changed that on Saturday. We also uh, changed uh, just uh, changed some things in the personnel agenda that well, we did as a favor to uh, one of the associations. The other is um, uh, then we realized in the closed session that we had missed one of the items. So we put the item for the um, tactical portion of the school safety plan, but we had missed the uh, uh, talking with the labor negotiator. And so we were able to do that 24 hours in advance as a special meeting. And so now we we should have reported out on the special meeting and adjourned it. But now officially adjourned. Officially adjourned. Officially closed. Okay, perfect. Now we're in the open session. <laughs> okay, next. Um, so for information, again, is um, CSCA's initial proposal for the 2023-2024 school year successor negotiations. And I want to thank our CSBA and its chapter 128 for the initial proposal for 23-24 school year successor negotiations, which she did at the beginning of the meeting already. So thank you so much. Thank you. Would you like to speak to your item? Okay. <laughs> They're in the board items. So. <laughs> okay. So I don't say anything. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Great. Thank you so much. Now you can leave if you like. All right. Thanks for coming. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, the next one is a discussion and action item. We've got the uh, comprehensive school safety plans, non tactical. John Bartel. Yes, thank you. Good evening, uh, Board of Trustees. Um, so a little bit of background on this item. Um, California Ed Code requires every K-12 school to develop and maintain a comprehensive school safety plan. Uh, this safety plan addresses campus risks, helps to prepare for emergencies, and create a safe learning environment for students and school staff. Um, we work closely with um, San Mateo County Office of Ed on the development of the comprehensive school safety plans. Um, this year was, it was a, a nice change where there was actually two plans developed, uh, an, uh, a tactical version or non-public version and then a public version of the plan. This made it a lot 
less labor intensive on our part because we didn't have to um, change versions that were in public versions um, uh, to take out cell phone numbers and things like that. So, um, so the, the process was a lot easier and kind of more efficient this time, um, which was great. Um, and we have two versions created, a public version and an internal version. The comprehensive school safety plans are really, um, the foundation is San Mateo County's big five, um, immediate uh, action emergency response for schools. And just as a reminder, the big five, shelter in place, drop, cover, and hold on, secure campus, lockdown, barricade, and, and um, evacuation. So those are, those are woven into the different um, safety procedures. Um, in the plans. In closed session, you had a chance to um, review and um, approve the tactical, but now is the time to for a vote on the public versions of the plans. And I'm happy to answer any questions that you may have. Are there any questions regarding this item? Okay, no questions then. Uh, do I have a motion to approve the 2023-2023 comprehensive school safety plans? I'll make a motion to approve the comprehensive school safety plans non-tactical. Okay, thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, and Barbara, can you take the vote, please? Mm -hmm. All right. Human resources updates. Is this information? Last speaker, uh, Carla Chavez Torres. Um, good evening, Board of Trustees. Um, today I'm going to a video update. Um, we will share information on current staffing of certificated positions and update on incentives to recruit special education teachers, a certificated substitute update planning for 23-24 school year, including the update of our seniority list and a current vacancy postings. Um, our previous HR update earlier this year focused on HR goals and presented information on demographics of our students, staff in the 21-2 school year, um, as well as plan strategies to recruit and retain a diverse workforce. Our HR goals continue to examine personal, personal assumptions, values, and beliefs to address recruitment and retention efforts of a diverse workforce with various cultural assets and promote equitable practices. We continue to use professional expectations and standards for all employees to guide, monitor, and support employees' efforts in continuous improvement of their job knowledge and performance, and we continue to set clear working agreements that support sharing of problems, practices, and results within a safe and supportive work environment for district office departments, school sites, and our labor partners. Um, and today we did have a negotiating day with LSEA. Um, here we do have current school site certificated positions information for you. Um, on the left-hand side is our school sites. Then we have our number of students, and this is current um, as of January 2023. Um, we have the next column, certificated teacher total. So these are our employees um, in the general education um, department. And then next to it are special education and student services certificated unit members. And then right next to it is the number of contracted certificated unit members. This is important because we have these positions as open positions on EdJoin. So we are looking concurrently for um, certificated employees to work in our school district to fill these positions. Um, the next column shows total certificated positions. And then the last column shows how many certificated unit members are, at, are interns or have waivers. So we have a total of eight and most of them are interns. So they are in programs with partner universities. And the next one are priorities for hiring based on unavailability of credential teachers. So we do have eight of them. Um, and this is according to board policy 4112.2 and ed code 4422.5.7. So we all, every year we do approve a declaration of need for fully qualified educators. Um, the last one we had at, was at the public board meeting in May of 2022 for this full year. So in May of this of 2023, we'll do one for 
This year, we also have special education incentives for recruitment for the many positions that we have open, which includes a $5,000 annual SPED stipend. And this will be the first recruitment season that we're able to offer this um, and to really showcase it. Uh, we also have a memorandum of understanding with LSEA regarding the reimbursement of tuition to obtain a special ed credential um, for teachers that would like to be interns. Uh, we also have a partnership, an active partnership with San Francisco State University Special Education Department for interns. Um, they did a special informational session early in January for our employees. Um, and we're trying to build a Pacifica School District pipeline of future special education credential teachers. And then we are also seeking additional recruitment opportunities for, for teachers. We have a fair, two fairs that are coming up, one with San Mateo County Office of Ed and one at San Francisco State University. Um, this is an update on substitute. Um, Board of Trustee Lobos had asked for this update. Um, and the certificate of substitute shortage is a problem that many school districts are facing. Um, some good news is that we did we do have an MOU with LSEA regarding um, substituting during preparation period and additional students do to substitute unavailability. And another good news is California Teaching Commission has lifted the basic skills requirement from January to June of 2023. Thus, it becomes easier to become a certificated substitute teacher with a bachelor's degree. So please encourage anybody that would like to be a substitute to just um, contact us or apply. Um, and some certificated substitute information is um, that it is a very fluid nature. It, it comes and it goes. Um, so currently we have 37 current certificated substitutes that are active. But of those 37, only 13 are consistent substitutes that continuously sub for our school districts. Um, four of our six schools have a regular one-day roving substitute. One of our six schools have a regular two-day roving substitute. These roving substitutes support meetings such as SSTs, 504s, or IEPs. Um, 12 substitutes have left in the last eight months. Five of those were hired by Pacifica School District as a teacher. Um, and then more information about hiring um, substitute certificated substitutes is 48 applied to be certificated substitute teachers in the last two school years. Um, and then 10 of the 48 were student teachers in our PSD classrooms. And here's a snapshot regarding certificated substitutes from the beginning of the school year to January 11th. 625 days were filled by certificated substitutes. 178 days where position vacancies were filled by certificated substitutes. And 177 days were unfilled due to lack of certificated substitutes. And I have a breakdown of what those 177 days were unfilled. Um, 68 were sick days, 28 COVID SB95, 14 FMLA, five bereavement, 25 personal necessity, and seven were conference workshops. So just wanted to give you a little bit of more detail of the days that were unfilled. And our next step regarding certificated substitute is to explore and analyze a more competitive certificated sub rate as compared to neighboring school districts in San Mateo County. Recruit for more certificated substitute applicants advertising the lift of the basic skills requirement and build a positive rapport and relationships with all certificated substitutes. And encourage classified staff and parents with bachelor degrees to become a certificated substitute. We've also started planning for 23-24. These are a few things that we've done. Um, we put in place the early notice incentive for certificated employees. So if we were notified by January 31st, they received $1,000. We received 10 notices, um, two retirements, and eight resignations. So that helps us in planning for those open positions. Um, we've had principal planning meetings where we've talked about 23-24 projected enrollment and staffing and budget and also their SIPSAs. 
Um, we've also sent out certificated and classified seniority list verification to all our employees in the certificated unit membership and the classified unit membership. Um, and it is recruitment season. And so we have many postings at this time. Um, we are positioning for a notification of release of management employees whose services shall not be required. We are positioning for notifications of release of certificated temporary employees and or non reelections of probationary employees. And we are positioning for anticipated classified layoffs due to lack of funds and our lack of work. And we will be bringing this to the March 8th board meeting. And if you have any questions, I'd love to answer them. Oh, and we have vacancy postings. Um, so these are, I, I didn't see that, but we have current vacancy postings on EdJoin. These are our certificated postings. But since then, we've posted additional. So we're the special day class teacher pool, so school psychologist pool, speech language pathologist pool, um, all the special education pools. We've been more specific. So we've listed how many positions are needed at what school. So now if you look on EdJoin, you will see more specificity around that. And these are classified postings. This has also been more specific. Um, so any of the pools, we've listed how many positions we need at every school. And we're hoping that the specificity will help our own employees transfer into positions that they might be interested in and for community members that are interested in working at a specific school site can't see that it's open at that school site and also apply or contact us to show us interest and now if you have any questions or discussion thank you so we have questions. She said a couple of good questions. Uh, on page three, can you help me understand what, um, like, as an example, in IBL 21.63 certificated teachers means? I know it's FTE, so there could be half an FTE and what have you, but I'm just wondering about the right. six three in particular. Right. What that means is just it means FTE. So somebody is probably half time. Um, so like a 0. 0.5, they do have a PE teacher that is 0. 0.4. Um, and then they have a music teacher that's also might be. So they have a couple part time positions. Okay. So it's those put together. Very it's the hundreds place, so very interesting. My question was um, how building a PSD pipeline for future SPED credentialed teachers, um, what would be like the first step to do that? Uh, it's definitely sharing opportunities for our paras to, if they need a bachelor's, like how do they get their bachelor's and then how do they get into the credential program? And there's been a lot of opportunities where um, the county is willing to pay for them to get their bachelor's. And then we have now the special education partnership where we're paying for their tuition to get their special education credential. So there's many opportunities and we've been sharing it and we have, um, a few classified employees that already have their bachelor's. So we're trying to um, entice them to go into special education by paying their tuition and being supportive. Um, so anytime they have any questions, I love to set up a meeting with them, talk to them. Um, I've been sharing the informational session that was recorded as well as the PowerPoint. Um, we have contacts at San Francisco State University that are willing to talk to them about the program as well. Um, John and Betsy have also been wonderful in special ed. So they went with, they went with us to the informational session. Um, they shared about their departments, also made it enticing for the people that were attending. And it is a recording, so um, we shared it with everybody that would like to see it. And there's been a couple of our unit members that have shown interest. So it's very exciting. And also for the classified position, um, we had some interest when that opportunity came up. Thank you. Yeah. Did we do the early notice instead of last year, or was that just this year? Just this year. We negotiated it last year for this year. So it's the very first year. Um, and we had, we had 10 people that notified us. Great. Do you have any early indications of what um, what the vacancies will look like at the end of this year versus what we've seen previously? 
We do. We do know what the vacancies are going to look like. And is it is it more vacancies this year versus previous years, or is it about the same? I would say it's about the same. We just know about them earlier. Right. Um, but there are, you know, there's a few rumors here and there that somebody might retire, but they didn't let us know. Um, so we're, we're waiting to probably have a few more general ed. We know our special ed vacancies, though. We have about 20 um, that are open, certificated, and then we have about 14 classified. Um, so those are all posted, um, and we're ready to fill them as we find people. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, any other questions? Um, I, I have a couple. Um, I was just curious what our sub rates are compared to other districts. Um, we do have a chart that I have all the um, districts, the school districts in San Mateo County. We are one of the lower ones. We're at 182 for daily rates. Mm -hmm. um, we have a formula that's 60% of the daily rates for the beginning teacher salary. Um, so if we were to increase it, we would probably use a formula that would like a percentage that would increase. So instead of 60% of of the daily rate, we might go to 70% or 80%, like depending where our budget is. Um, but we are one of the lowest ones. Um, another question was back on slide three again. Uh, you, you mentioned, and I maybe I just missed that some of the contract, maybe did you say that the contracted positions remain open because they're contracted? Okay, so that's good. So we're constantly trying to look for that. Great. And then um, I'm just out of curiosity, what's your success been at the job fairs that um, in the past? How, how's that work? Um, well, last year we had a virtual job fair, which was really cool. John was there with me and we had a virtual booth and we were talking to people. Yeah, virtual selves, <laughs> Carla and I. <laughs> well, yeah. a virtual booth. Um, it, was, it was nice and we had quite a few people that were interested. Um, but I, this time it's gonna be in person. So I think we'll have even more, um, especially showcasing what we can offer with all our incentives. So we're hoping to really show that off um, and recruit. Um, and today we had a negotiating day with LSEA and they've been sharing by word of mouth, just like what a great place it is to work here, you know, which is really nice, right? Um, and so people have been sending me resumes of people they know and contact information. And so they haven't even applied yet, but I'm getting like resumes and emails. And so I'm like, let's set up a meeting. I'd love to meet you, you know, and meanwhile, you know, you can apply here and I send them the link. Um, so I think, I think our community is really trying to help with the hiring. That's great. That's great. Um, okay, any other questions? I was just wondering if we put those out in the newsletters or like um, that you're having a job fair, if they go out to the PTO newsletters. Yeah, we can put that. We have, a, yeah. we have a hiring flyer, a recruitment flyer that they put out there and it has like a, a scan code they can scan and it goes directly to the positions. Um, but I think when I get the flyer for the recruitment fairs, we can send those out too. Yeah. Okay, any other questions? Very good presentation. Yeah, thank you. All right, so next is the CSBA Delegate Assembly election. It's an action item. Okay, uh, so at the California School Board Association, the uh, uh, the delegates, 280 delegates all over the state come together from 21 regions, and it's our opportunity to vote for the uh, members of sub-region 5B. There are three candidates, and we get three votes. So uh, may I recommend or uh, ask you to consider voting for Heather Hopkins of Las Lomitas, Greg Land of San Mateo Union High School District, and Kalima Saludin uh, of Jefferson Union High School District. So three votes, three candidates. So one. Shall we vote for? Okay. I, I, no, we. I guess we cast our vote, uh, and I, I think we would cast for all three. Okay. Unless there's someone you'd like to take off of there. 
Okay. Are there any questions or comments before we do that? We can vouch for hopefully we will solve the day. Yeah. He was a hard worker and very dedicated. And for years. It's our graduate, so right. it's just a typical school district. <laughs> Anything else? Okay, so um, then I'd like, would someone like to make a motion to vote uh, for all three of these candidates? I'll make a motion to vote or to make the delegate assembly election and vote for all three candidates. Thank you. All right, and Barbara, would you please take the vote? It's all in favor, please raise your hands. We shouldn't have these fights here. All right. Let's see. Next is the board policy updates. Okay. Like January was long ago. Uh, <laughs> that, that does seem like such a long time ago, but we didn't finish uh, in the time that we were together. Um, if somebody could put the presentation up, I'll start with that. And then um, I've asked Carla to also do the, if we're talking about a particular policy to, to uh, bring that one up. I'll get started uh, just talking about the process. And so uh, we actually did make some nice progress on our biggest um, uh, board sections. Um, so next slide for me, please. All right, so uh, in the uh, work study, we finished uh, the 3,000s, the uh, 4,000s personnel, 5,000 students, 6,000s instruction. Uh, and Josie also finished the 7,000s, and we started with the bylaws. So tonight, I'm going to go over um, the zeros, the 1,000s, and the 2,000s, and go back to some uh, ones that had some more discussion needed. So next slide, please. So just as a, a big picture is we worked with the CSBA consultants for the revision. We went over about 600 policies, uh, working on board policies. Mostly we followed the CSBA recommendations with minor edits. Um, they processed the board policies and sent us back a draft. Uh, uh, we presented to you with the work study. Next slide. Um, hmm, we'll keep going on that one. I, I can't believe I missed that one. I wonder, I think you might be in the wrong, uh, the wrong presentation. It's the one that's uh, 23.2. So in the regular meeting, okay. there's another one called 23.2. It, it was on the agenda, but it was, um, there's two in that one. So um, PSD, no. Okay, let's go over to the next one. That's the policy. There you go, that one right there. I called it uh, 22.3. Uh, so it's very similar. I just took out the stuff that we've already covered. So tonight we're gonna go the 1000s, the zeros, the 2000s, and then go back to the extras. So in terms of, um, of uh, policy 000 is we did keep the, um, the CSBA uh, policy, but the uh, administrative regulation, which we had was deleted by um, CSBA in 2017. So I think we will also delete that. Um, 0200 is goals for the district. And it basically talks about um, it talks about uh, the goals of the district being front and center in the LCAP. The LCAP goals are the district goals. The district goals are the LCAP goals. That's the basic of that. It talks about the comprehensive plans and ways of, of going about that. I feel like we've been through many comprehensive plans, um, and you've seen that in action. Uh, with equity, we um, use CSBA because when we first adopted it, we mostly use CSBA with some edits, specifically uh, adding in LGBTQ+. Um, so that is a part of our equity policy that we will keep in place. 
Um, we did the charter school authorizations uh, at some point that I was here and we did all of them. At this point, we're only going to keep the charter. It's my recommendation that we only keep the charter school authorization. We currently have no charter schools, so we have to have the policy around how we would go about authorizing it. And then um, so keeping in the board policy and the administrative regulation, we've removed all other um, at, at CSBA's recommendation, all other charter school policies and administrative regulations, including oversight, renewal, and uh, re revocation, because we would do that if we had a charter school, right? So um, we have the um, tools to authorize that. And then if we did authorize a charter, then we would put in place oversight, renewal, and revocation. Um, comprehensive school safety plans, exactly as we did today, uh, the separation of the tactical versus the non-tactical, what you do in closed session and what you do in open session. And then it's my recommendation that uh, we uh, exclude the COVID mitigation plan. Um, and that's because it's just no longer current. It's back in the early days of COVID that, um, that don't make sense anymore at this point. So any, uh, we'll keep going in terms of the 1000s. Um, so uh, communication with the public is kind of a foundation of a school district and very, very important. We've seen in multiple situations how important that is. So it's uh, a part of the board policy. Uh, district and school websites, what needs to be on each website and, um, and sometimes where they need to be. For example, the board agenda needs to be on the front page you know, that you can reach uh, directly. Um, so there's still some work that our district needs to do with that, but we will use the CSBA update on that one. Yes. And then the other one I, I brought out was volunteer assistance, and um, we're going to use the district. It's very similar to CSBA, but there are just a couple of things that we have in that is um, uh, when we have volunteer drivers, we ask for a, a criminal Department of Justice uh, fingerprinting. Um, and so for two groups of, of, uh, of volunteers, one volunteer drivers and those student and those volunteers that are spend significant time alone with students, that makes sense to have them uh, have criminal backgrounds. Uh, uh, Cabrillo School does ask that all parent volunteers be fingerprinted. That is uh, not required by the district. It is a policy that was put in place just as I was coming on as superintendent. Um, the other thing is uh, that's required as a part of uh, uh, CSBA's recommendation and uh, being a volunteer is TB assessments are needed for individuals with frequent and prolonged uh, contact with students. And I think uh, coming out of the pandemic, we need to make sure that we have a consistent process for checking that. Uh, Ocean Shore has a very robust parent volunteer program and they do that regularly. We also need to ensure that that's happening throughout the district. Um, and then in terms of uh, volunteer assistance is also uh, can be used for facilities projects, not uh, to take away from any CSEA jobs, but it also is, is uh, I know many of the uh, cleanup days and other things that happened at the start of school with the result of uh, volunteer assistance. Next slide. A couple things I just want to bring to your attention in terms of uh, there is a policy called outsider registration, which essentially says anyone who comes to campus should sign in in the office. We did also continue to keep the piece that comes from San Mateo County Council, which is around if immigration officials come to campus, that they also must check in through the office. And uh, there's some very particular things on um, I actually can't read that from here, but could somebody read uh, the green part out loud? Can anybody see that? Can you can read it. Go ahead, Nina. Yeah, it's higher, which would include immigration enforcement officers shall enter or remain on school grounds of the district during school hours without having registered with the principal or designee. And those that were, that's probably right about 27, 2018, that you all probably have some memory. I don't know that it happened in Pacifica, but it was happening in San Mateo County where immigration officials were coming to schools. Um, so we will continue to keep that in there. 
Um, 1312.1 to 1312.4 is how one would uh, file a complaint. Um, one, uh, point one is complaints against district employees. Point two is, uh, actually point one is concerning district employees. Point two is um, instructional materials. There's one more about district employees. Complaints about instructional materials, complaint. Could you just go back just a little bit, Carla, 13.1? There's a board policy and a regulation. Oh, perfect. Okay, that's what I thought it was. Uh, complaints concerning district um, district employees is 13 point, is 12.1, right? 13, 12.1, okay. Next one is, that's the AR. That's the AR. Point two is complaints concerning instructional materials. And the last one is the uniform complaint. That's point four. Well, I really can't. Point three. I really can't see those from here. And then that uniform complaint process. So it's just what we have seen. Um, what we have seen is just being very clear about what the process is, is very helpful to, to families. And um, there just needs to be a process to, to go through when people are getting what they need. Okay. 1313 is civility. Uh, uh, at the time that we were redoing this, uh, doing the board policies, not necessarily in the Pacifica School District School Board, but all over the country, uh, we've seen uh, things heat up in a way that uh, it really challenges the ability for trustees and uh, staff to do their work. So um, in terms of uh, civility throughout our school district is how we treat each other. Um, 1321, solicitation of funds from and by students. And we see that all the time in uh, the newsletters that we get. Uh, just a couple of things is that our policy says no door-to-door -to -door sales. Um, that's uh, not uh, not allowed for our students. And then no student should be made to feel uncomfortable or pressured to provide funds. And you, we just have to be careful when you think about things as a contest or let's do this. Uh, there are lots of people that either can't do that or lots of people that, uh, you know, they can have a grandparent write the check for that. And so we have to recognize that uh, our primary job in education is educating all students and not raising funds. So we, we do always have to kind of remind ourselves for that. And then I put 1330 on there for use of school facilities and the, that, um, that one, uh, spells out how you would consider the uh, calculating the uh, school fees. And it is something that we're going to have to do. I know that I just took a look at local fees um, and uh, I just took a look at local fees and we are way under. Um, we recognize that our fields needed some time catching up, um, but we're not even in the same ballpark. And so I, I when I see other school districts um, charging much more than we do, I, it is probably time to relook at what those fees are. And in the policy, it spells out how you might consider that. Okay, um, 2000s, I think you'll be familiar with these. Uh, just bringing to your attention the superintendent recruitment and selection process, as well as the superintendent's contract. Uh, the most important piece around that superintendent Superintendent's contract is that when you do hire a, a superintendent, that the final vote on that contract happens in public. And so uh, you can have discussions and negotiations in closed session, but when it comes time to, to finally um, uh, approve the contract, that happens in public. Okay. Um, the last ones that I have are the ones that uh, acquire. Uh, require some additional discussion and attention. Were there any questions on the last three sections or uh, comments on the last three sections? Keep rolling. 
Okay, uh, very easy. This is a little bit of a checklist, but there there is room here for some uh, additional discussion. Um, so. Uh, 4340 is the one that uh, should be removed because um, LSMA is not a bargaining unit. They're a, a meet and confer group. And so we're going to take that policy out. Um, AR 5111.1 was around district residency. And that's where we as uh, as staff were recommending the removal of the Allen bill. Um, and so there's one other chart that I shared. Could we put that up on the screen? Yeah, I, actually all of you have that chart. So um, so one of the questions that came up around Allen bill were how many Allen bills do we have? How many transfers do we have? So I asked Nicole Ortega at a very busy time in the kindergarten lottery time if she might put together some numbers for the last five years. It would have been great to do the last three years, but I think a lot of things have been impacted by COVID. So let's get that chart up there. Okay. So we did the last five years. Could you put it in presentation mode? That'll help us. Okay, perfect. So, oh, good. I don't even have to look up there. Um, so if we look at inter-district transfers, we do a little bit less than 150 a year with 124 and 117 uh, the last two years. Um, in 2018-19, uh, we denied seven of those. Um, and then what, what I've really learned is that most Allen Bill transfers are uh, to our own district employees. So we would always keep our own district employees. So there are kind of three groups uh, that uh, are interested in the Allen Bill transfers. Uh, district employees, Jefferson Union High School district employees, uh, sometimes City of Pacifica employees. But we are the largest employer in the city. So um, so when I say Allen Bill, so there were five Allen Bill transfers in 1819. Four of them were district employees. Uh, and so uh, we have, we currently this year have one. That person is a, a uh, child of a, a district employee. Um, we have only, um, when we talk about regular inter-district transfers, and that's just, you know, somebody comes in and says, I live in another city. My, my district has released me to attend your school district. Could we please come in? And uh, we have um, uh, denied very few, and we've recognized the power of the county appeal system uh, because when we do deny, people have appealed. We've learned a lot from that. Uh, of the denials that happened, uh, there were a couple just simply because we didn't provide the program that they had that they were requesting. Like for example, requesting distance learning this year, we don't offer distance learning, right? We do offer the homeschool program, but we don't offer distance learning. So the denials, we don't have very many of them. We did do a revocation and that was for a very se severe disciplinary uh, behavior uh, situation. So, um, but we have only done one of those in the five years that I've been here. So. So that's just some background information on the Allen bill. And so if the Allen bill um, were not there, the district employees, they would go into this inter-district transfer process. Yes. Yeah. And so they would they would have to reapply every year because it's a one year. Yeah. It's a one year. So. Right. Um, in, in general, we don't ever take that away. Like we all promise uh, and we could. Um, one of the things that I... Um, is that we we don't take that away in terms of it's yes they do have to reapply every year but we we keep it going if we've promised it to them it's till the end of that school school year so if for example they're going to sunset ridge it's till the end of fifth grade then they would um you know apply for a sixth grade and uh, and that would be until the end of their sixth grade Okay, let's go back to the discussion items. Okay. Sorry. Board policy revision 23.2. 
Okay, um, so going on to policy 51, uh, 16.1, that's our intra-district enrollment. Um, I'm actually gonna pull that one out of there. I, that's to, to us, uh, that's the foundation of our, uh, all students can go to all schools in Pacifica and that process. And I, well, we wanna put in the parts of CSBA that are updated. I'm not completely confident that we also captured all of the pieces around the very specific ways that we do our lottery. And so we're very transparent about it. I'm um, going to ask that we pull that one out separate and that John and I would work with uh, Gina Belcamo, our lawyer, during that February break, just to make sure that everything is matching. Um, policy 5144, where uh, Eagle Eyes via Lobos saw that there was something about uh, high school in there, so we just need to pull those things up. Um, security cameras uh, were in campus security, um, as we talked about that. Um, uh, I found that in there, uh, both around what we do with the what we do with the data in terms of the recordings that they would be uh, that they wouldn't be held on there, um, but also um, the other piece of that is when uh, it could be monitored and only under very specific situations or threats could it be monitored, um, and that we wouldn't give access to it unless there was a, a really significant legal threat on that one. Um, so that's important information about security cameras and. And then uh, uh, Trustee Patel asked about cybersecurity, uh, some of the things that came out about CSBA. And we don't have a particular policy on cybersecurity. Um, the pieces where it, it is um, adjacent is around uh, retention of student and staff data. Um, the other piece is, um, what was I gonna say? Oh, I was going in to answer that question with a slide. And I recognize that I wasn't really talking about policies anymore. I was talking more about practices. Mm -hmm. And I think um, we had a um, had to respond to a, a grand jury request. Uh, so we have definitely some very specific answers that I will uh, put in um, confidential uh, communications with you. And then we could most likely find some time. I think we would probably discuss it in closed session as opposed to open session, I think. But we do not have a specific uh, cybersecurity policy, but also CSBA does not have a recommendation on there. I do think that we will very likely see those in the upcoming updates because at CSBA, it was one of the hottest topics. And, and uh, uh, people were very concerned about that. So, so these, the bulk of these policies, these 600 policies, this just gets us um, caught up, current, but then we have um, in December, a set of policies came out. And then in March, a set of policies that would come to come out. My dream, although I think it may be ambitious knowing the large amount of work that you all have to do, we definitely want to get through the December ones as a group. I uh, Half of our cabinet has not been a part of this process. Barbara's not done this process together. So I definitely want us to get through the December ones. It'd be great to get the March ones. Maybe we get them done in June, but it would be great to have those done so that when the new superintendent comes in that they don't have to play catch up in any way. So, um, so what I would uh, ask if you can go to the next slide is, um, so the question is, is we're going to pull out the one around in district transfer, probably bring that back to you separately in April, because that one as a district is the one that absolutely has to be correct. Um, but the next steps that I have is, so discussion tonight, then would you be prepared and comfortable to move forward in approval of this bulk? And what, what date sounds right to you in terms of the, the right the work that you have to do to prepare for that. Would it be better to do it on March? March 8th is a big, typically human resources budget heavy meeting. That will be a long meeting. 
you could just approve the policies. Like it doesn't need to be a lot of discussion. Um, or March 29th, which is going to be probably very heavy on the superintendent uh, search. You'll have an hour in closed session and at least an hour in open session. So, so I defer to you for both discussion and thoughts about approvals. Can I ask a question or make a comment about policy or the one you want to pull? Mm -hmm. 5116.1. Mm -hmm. um, have we ever thought of lowering the full-time status of the employees to part-time? Yeah, I, I actually wanted to go back and look at what our agreement with LSEA, because I do think that there was some something in there that was point eight. Yeah, or um, with all of the staff, because I'm just thinking if we're trying to recruit CSEA employees, oh, oh and yeah. most of them are only part-time right. jobs. Right. You know, if they're coming from Daly City or San Francisco or somewhere else, you know, would it help if that's their actually a child, very good point? Um, could go to school here. Okay, we'll look at that. That's a great idea. Any thoughts? I mean, I, I guess I, I will reiterate um, my uh, my support for continuing um, the Allen Bill in our policies. Um, I know in practice we may say that we'll continue to approve every year uh, employees, students, and what have you. But as administration changes, sometimes practices changes too, and so that's that's the point of policy. And I think when I think about five students, that's sixty thousand plus dollars to the district um, in terms of our our revenue. So I I would I would like to have discussion or what have you, but at least I just wanted to voice my opinion on the Allen Bill piece. And I do understand that challenges happen um, in circumstances. Um, but I think the policy uh, is an important one to continue. So would we need to have that discussion before we think of approving everything as lunch? Yeah, I mean, I don't that either. We can do one of two things. We can approve it as a lunch, meaning that if you all directed me to change that policy, then I could change it so that it went out as a lunch, or we can do what we're doing with the intra-district transfer okay. one, and pull that one out. That probably might be the simplest, most straightforward one that that gets a vote on its own and the rest of them get approval. I mean, I might personally think if we were going to pull those two for discussion at a later time, that we would probably be ready to move forward um, and vote on March 8th just to kind of get us past this. Um, now, I don't know when we can have the discussion on those two items, but uh, yeah, but maybe that's April, right? Like that, yeah. that seems to be, but I don't know, that's my thought. I don't know. Are you guys still? I think that's right. Okay. okay. We'll try that on the eighth. Thank you very much. Okay. I think the next thing is future agenda items. Let's call that up. All right. Future agenda items. I can't believe it. It's not even nine. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> All right. Let me get to the future agenda items. Jesse, leaving so early. Hi, Jesse. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Jessie. Good night. All right. That was nice of him to say. Um, okay. Excuse me while I. Okay, here we go. <laughs> um, so uh, March 8th, here's what we're talking about. Josie is going to have a second interim report. We hope to have a parcel uh, tax uh, committee report as a part probably of that second interim report. We're going to talk about our ESSER gear and ELO funds because we so the good news is is that there is a nice cola. The bad news is is that we are at the end of any one time funds and so we have to be very strategic about how to spend that. So we are going to report out on that. We will uh, report out on our projected enrollment in staffing. 
we are going to um, send out a enrollment survey just to verify people's enrollment coming back. So when we come back in February, uh, asking people to verify their enrollment, we probably won't be able to get even that detailed level, but just based on what we know now and getting our staffing on that. We hope to have our district proposal for CSEA negotiations. Um, we will have to do resolutions in terms of layoffs. Um, uh, the LCAP and budget update. Um, we are going to do a student achievement update. Um, so you notice there's a lot of updates on these things. We can promise you don't want a 30 minute presentation on all of these. So for some of them, you might see the presentation is done and it may because we want to make sure that the meetings are meaningful in terms of, but not uh, that they're not marathons. So we may say uh, the presentation was in the uh, agenda. Are there any questions? Okay, if there are certain things that you feel like uh, uh, Linda and I are working together in terms of putting that agenda together, this is the hardest time of the year because the meetings could be really, really long. And we saw from the, the one when we were talking to the um, superintendent search firm is that we get to a point where we're no longer uh, that good. So that's going to be a long meeting. We will have a lot of updates, but they may just be the update was in the uh, board agenda. Do you have any questions? Trying to be very um, uh, efficient with our time. Then on the 29th is really the second superintendent search board meeting where there'll be some closed session and some open session. We're going to do uh, a report out on reading instruction in Pacifica School District, K-5 uh, adoption. We'll do a, a report out on the uh, lotteries. We've held the sixth grade lottery. We uh, are going to do the TK and K lottery uh, at the end of next week. Um, and then again, some more reports where we'll have a school climate update. Uh, we will be doing some instructional materials purchase. We're looking at uh, buying a phonics program as well as a uh, science materials. Um, and then uh, if we do the approval of the board policy, we'll do that on the 8th. Um, and then those two policies that we brought out, more likely we will get to in April. Are there any other requests? Uh, not a new request, but uh -huh. um, on the March 8th, um, if we could go through the student achievement presentation, that would be okay. great. Okay. Um, and then uh, we will work as a cabinet to keep our presentations short and tight. Also. All right. Thank you very much for your work. Any other questions, Randy? Okay. Um, we will adjourn our meeting at 8.27 p.m. Record.